hello everyone. I'm Julian, working at Parrot um, for the Drone Code project right now, and I'm here to talk you, to you about that. Um, I only started to work on the Drone Code project and even on specific things to drones a, a while ago, just in June, so it's not very long time ago. So I apologize for the mistakes I will make or anything I won't know or maybe even stupid things I will say, but I will try to explain to you what I'm doing right now. Um, so the Drone Code project is, quote, an open source collaborative project that brings together existing and future open source drone projects under a non-profit structure governed by the Linux Foundation. The result will be a common shared open source platform for unmanned aerial vehicles. So uh, there are lots of things to say about that, but I only have 20 minutes, so let's get started. Uh, how many people here have heard of the Drone Code project? Okay, and how many of you have actually taken a deeper look in, in the project? Okay, that's cool, then I'll be all right. Um, so the Drone Code project right now is, um, these are the numbers, the number of developers, and um, it aims, it, they think that the drones are becoming part of our everyday life and they are trying to regroup different projects that are open source and in order to create a common platform, like the quote said. Uh, on the other hand, ourselves, Parrot, we are a French-based company, we are here in Paris and we've been making drones for a while now. In 2010, we released the Parrot AR drone it's, uh, it was based on the Parrot 6 SoC that we designed ourselves, and it was an ARM 926, an ARM 9 chip. It was already running a Linux kernel and a BusyBox. Then we released the AR Drone 2, which was uh, with an OMAP 3630, and a Linux kernel and a BusyBox 2. And um, the Parrot Bebop that uh, was released uh, two years ago, a bit less. And it's a Parrot 7 SoC, it's still Linux kernel, BusyBox, a dual Cortex-A9. It's also a SoC that we design ourselves. Um, so, on drones, you have a different type of software. You have the software that are running on board, software that are running on the remote, what they call ground control stations sometimes, uh, which are on computers, tablets, or smartphones. You have the cloud software, it has just started a bit yet, that for data that are uploaded to the cloud and, sh and shared and so that the makers can analyze them. And you also have protocols that bind them together. Um, on Parrot drones, the onboard software, we have a custom proprietary, proprietary flight stack. It's running entirely on Linux. We don't have a preempt RT patch, we don't use it. And it's, it's quite different from what's present on other drones. I'll explain that later. Um, so in onboard software, you have different parts. And one of them is the flight stack. It's something very specific to drone. And um, to come back on the drone code project, there are two flight stacks currently. One is called APM, and it was developed to run on an Arduino. And the other is called PX4 and has been developed to run on Nodex. Same as uh, Greg told before for the ARA project. Um, so um, first of all, the drone code project was announced in uh, the ELCE last year. It was in, um, in October, last October. And uh, at this time, I took a look at it and I say, wow, cool, drones on Linux, we could join that. But in fact, there was no drone running Linux at this, at this period. So I was quite astonished and I said, oh, we've been making drones on Linux for a while. We're, we're not open source. The flight stack is not open source. But um, it's strange that no one tried that. So what changed is that just after that, between October and January, in January, um, Andrew Twidgell at the, the Linux conference in Australia uh, there was an article on, in the LWN about that, and he was talking about drones running Linux with the APM flight stack. It was one of the two flight stacks I've been talking about. 
And um, it was using a Beaglebone blackboard with a fire cape, which Pixhawk fire cape, which is just an, an extension you 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 plug to the board, and then it's used to fly a drone. We you have motors and stuff wired to it. It's very complex, but it's it's fun. Um, what was fun is that he made a demo and uh, he was remotely controlling his drone. He wa the conference was in Perth, and the drone was flying in uh, Canberra. And uh, he was connected to it via SSH, and he started uh, to fly the drone to have it execute a flight plan. And uh, what was part of the fun is it was compiling a Linux kernel while flying to test for the real-time capabilities of it. So it, it started, started compiling, and came back. He didn't finish to compile the drone, but everything went fine, although the CPU was very busy. Um, he also announced that several Linux boards had appeared, and there were ports of uh, APM for the Big Old Black, which he used. The old brain, which is uh, deri derived from that, but it's sold as uh, one package. Uh, and the Navio, which is an, an extension to the Raspberry Pi. Um, Qualcomm also announced at the Embedded Linux conference last year, but uh, in uh, San Jose in uh, March, that they were working on the port of the PX4 flight stack on Linux. One of their interests is that it's BSD, so it's maybe more accessible to some, some firms that don't want to publish all their code, but uh, also they're starting to, to work on something that just was released a month ago and called the Snapdragon Flight Platform. So Qualcomm has already released a development board for drones with the Snapdragon and with the PX4 stack. So um, about drones, um, drones, I will talk only about quadcopters, like this one, which is the Parrot Bebop. They have four propellers, and so they are quite impossible for any human being to fly, uh, or manually, I, I'm speaking, because um, you cannot um, analyze everything in real time and control four propellers. It's very, very difficult. So what you have on board are sensors, and um, Basically, you have inputs and outputs. Inputs are only the sensors, the data from the sensors, and the commands from the user, which is a remote controller, joysticks, everything. And for the outputs, if I just talk about the autopilot, because there are other things, but just to have the drone fly, it's only motor speeds. Motor speeds, uh, so it gets sensors, get the inputs and process, and gives the motors the appropriate speeds to execute the commands that was asked by a user. Um, Audio pilot. I'll focus on audio pilot. Um, there was already Linux ports available, so when we came back to, from the ELC, we came straight to our boss office and said, "Come on, we have drones running Linux. We we can do something here because there's an open source stack that we can port to our drones. It works almost the same way as ours, and we can directly hack our own drones. We have all the specifications, so it'd be very easy." And we'll have the open source project flying on it. So the main there were lots of interest about that uh, to convince my boss because he doesn't have to publish any, to release any code. Just have to let me adapt the existing code. You don't have to reveal any secret, anything. You just put the code and allow any users in the world to fly this on our drone. So that's why I got started on ArduPilot. So ArduPilot, one of the two flight stacks I've been talking about, on this, you read from sensors. There is something which is very common in drones. Maybe you've heard about it, an enhanced command filter. And uh, the goal of it is to estimate the state of the drone. Um, basically, drones use um, public drones, like consumer electronic drones, use very basic sensors, like the one you find in tablets or phones, and they are really bad. But what is nice is they have uh, usually one sensor that is very good, or a lot better, for instance, a GPS. And so they take bad data, they fuse them together, and once in a while, they reset everything with the good data. So you have the IMU, uh, which is an initial me measurement unit, like the ones you get in tablets, accelerometers, are, and so you use it for applications. And it has very bad data, it has a bias, but once in a while you reset the bias with the good data from the GPS or for something, from something else. You have a, so you have IMUs, barometers, compass, GPS, optical flow sensors, which is, um, on this one you have a camera on, on the bottom, and it films the ground and analyzes the, the images to get a fixed point. 
Uh, you also have a sauna on this one, which is here. Uh, and you have a lot of exotic stuff like uh, LIDARs, uh, pitot tubes, and some others. Not on this one, though. Um, for controlling the motors, you have an external microcontroller. It's the only thing that's not running Linux. It's an external microcontroller because the motor control is it's very heavy in real time. You have to, it's, it's very complex. I, I don't know a lot about it. Yeah. Um, sorry. So, on the Bebop, uh, the overall architecture is that you have the Parrot 7 SOC, you have I square C buses, one with the compass, which is AK 8963, a barometer, which is MS 5607, and the motor controller. You have the IMU, which is alone on its I square C bus, and it's a lot better. It's even very bad to have it on an I square C bus because it's slow and unreliable, but it has its own, so we can do something about that. Because IMU data come at one kilohertz, so you have to read data from the sensor at one kilohertz. IMUs give accelerometer and gyroscopes on three axes. You have uh, the camera, it's a Naptina camera, connected by I square C and with a parallel bus for the data. And uh, you have a GPS, it's a Furuno GPS connected by UART, like often GPSs are. Um, so, I started to study exactly what I had to do to have uh, RG Pilot run on our Linux board. So, I took a look at the code base, and um, just to, to understand it, uh, they have different class, it's a C++ project. And you have different classes for device drivers, and one of them, which is the one I really needed to modify, is called the, the hell, like hardware abstraction layer, it's quite common. Uh, part of it is implementing I2C, SPI, and UART drivers. So for that, we, on Linux, it's implementing user space drivers, because it's, uh, you open the slash dev slash I2C, and you write and read of, uh, on it, UART the same, etc. And in the end, the drivers, the user land drivers for different components I showed, the sensors, they use uh, the, the defined function for writing, reading to it. Um, if there are questions about, there might be questions about that, and I, I answer them later because, uh, yeah, it's not the way usually things are done on Linux. You don't, it's not the best thing to do to write user land drivers, but it has its uh, advantages, especially because it's very portable. You don't have to run Linux. And the IEPM flight stack runs on Linux, but it runs on other boards, it runs on microcontrollers, Arduinos, and stuff, so it's very easy to implement it this, this way. Um, so, what I had to do to basically port it to, to this drone, for the barometer, there was an, ex an existing driver for a barometer that was very close to the one that is on a Bebop, so I didn't have to do a lot. It was just a matter of scaling factor and some modifications to be more generic. For the compass, it was also a matter of genericity because, um, yeah, it's not AL, it's AK. Um, it was designed to be a slave device to an IMU, so yeah, it was still uh, plumbery. It's just modifications of the driver to deal with a direct I2C connection instead of, uh, instead of passing through an IMU. And for the IMU, it was meant to be used in SPI because it's a lot faster and a lot better than I2C to do that. Um, so there was a problem there. Um, we didn't have an RT, a preempt RT patch, so there were jittering issues. Uh, it's very bad to have jitter issues on a sensor because basically you think you're capturing at one kilohertz, but you don't capture at one kilohertz, you capture one, once, uh, it's gonna be like uh, half of it, then twice it, and, and in the end it gets very, very bad. The data, if you look at the data, it, you, uh, it seems you have lots of noise and you don't understand why. So um, I had to implement something we've already been doing on, the, on this, on the Parrot fly stack which is implementing the use of a FIFO. It's a lot better, and I think they, they started using it now because uh, if you miss a sample, then you capture two the next time, and it's all right. And if you don't have a sample to capture, you don't copy the, the, the data. You just check how many samples are available and capture them. So in the end, it, it got well, and I was able to achieve the one kilohertz rate. 
because I wasn't really late. I was just uh, sometimes late, sometimes not, sometimes late, sometimes, sometimes not. So I, I was able, I just uh, set the maximum number of samples to three because uh, I knew that approximately the real time I could achieve on Linux was that. Uh, if, uh, if it took me more than three milliseconds, then th there was a, a real problem on the board. But less than three milliseconds was all right. So you sh yeah, you can check, it, it works. On, on this board, at least it works. Um, for the motor controller, I had to write a whole new drivers because uh, a whole new driver because it was connected by I square C with the proprietary protocol. It, it's not closed, but it's, it was proprietary, so I had to implement it. So I just wrote a new class for the for this driver. Uh, I'll talk about it later. And uh, for the GPS, it was almost supported. It's an NMEA GPS, so NMEA is quite standard for GPSs. And uh, there was already an NMEA driver, so I just have to uh, fix a bit of things and add some frames that weren't supported. Uh, for the RC outputs, so um, you command motors, and the way uh, modalist, or let's say uh, uh, radio, tele radio amateur, no, how do you call it in English? I don't know. Yeah, people who fly drones, uh, they use usually RC outputs and they are coded in PWM values. They have PWMs to command motors because it's the same as the commands you give to servos. So it's, uh, it's almost, uh, they implemented the same thing to run motors. So what you give to the motor is uh, a frequency, it's the PWM frequency, and the value, which is the duty cycle. And the duty cycle for APM are usually between 100, uh, 1,000 and 100 microseconds and uh, 1,900 microseconds. Uh, so basically, the bebop, it's more simple than that. You just uh, send via I square C frames that say, run this motor at this speed, and you just give it RPMs. So I just had to write a very simple thing to convert these PWMs to RPM values and send them via I square C. But I had to read the internal documentation about, the, about the, the microcontroller and the software that was running it. And that was fun because it's not that easy to find internally the, the, the information you need to write the drivers, which was a bit crazy, but it's still it was very difficult. So I went asking around, but there was a team of guys that we helped uh, doing the same job, which was, we, they are called the Paparazzi Project. And we helped them to port their autopilot to our boards. And what's very nice is that they, they did it and they published a wiki. And in fact, the, their wiki was better to understand, a lot easier to understand than our internal documentation. So I went on their wiki. <laughs> and um, so I implemented the protocol like they said, and uh, it seemed to work. So um, basically to show you the kind of function you can have in this class, you have the set ref speed of the motor and uh, just uh, it's, constitute the frame, like it said, and you send and write on the I square C. It's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, they have semaphores, but yeah. Let's pass on that. Um, no. The, so at this moment, I was all right, and uh, something was missing still. It was the input from the user, because usually these guys, they also use an RC remote to command, and we don't. Uh, this drone and all the parrot drones have been designed to be controlled via by iPads, tablets, smartphones via on Wi-Fi. So we have a proprietary protocol and its connection states, etc. Too complicated. I didn't want to take that because it's very like, uh, yeah, it relies on the whole state machine of the autopilot and the application. So I had to write um, something very simple to uh, control it. And usually they just get radio commands and they're also PWM values, the same as for the motors. It's, they don't mean the same thing, but they, they are the same. Uh, you have usually five commands or four basic ones, which is uh, pitch, so pitch is like that, roll, which is like that, yo, and throttle, which is the thrust of the motors, and so it's almost the speed of the motors. And you have a fifth one, which is the, um, the piloting mode on APM, but it's something else. So I had just to write a very simple protocol, which I submitted upstream to, uh, to send uh, PWM values, time step and sequence number. And uh, yeah, it's very, very basic protocol. And uh, I wrote a small utility on my GitHub, very simple too, using a Linux joystick inputs to plug a, 
uh, yeah, gamepad on, on my computer and uh, capturing the joysticks input and sending the PWM commands accordingly. It's very, very simple. Uh, I knew that uh, we have a remote, I don't have it here, but we have designed a remote who's, uh, which is also running Linux. So I knew that it had also this joystick input, so I, I will be able to port it on the Sky Controller. And I have done it since. So it's, it's fun because I hacked also the Sky Controller and put my software on it and pilot APM with it. Um, so I tried to fly. It was fun, but it crashed. Basically, uh, it's usual, it never flies the first time, I think, or oh, there is something wrong. Um, what is very nice about the APM project is you have very good logging systems. These guys, they, they understand the, the meaning and the, the real value of telemetry data. So they have a, a very nice logging systems. You can log everything that's going on in a drone. You can log every single IMU data at one kilohertz. So, I, I was in contact with the maintainers of the project, who are uh, Twidge, Andrew Twidgel, and another one called Randy Mackay, is very nice too. And I sent them the logs because I couldn't analyze them myself. Uh, I was at this time, uh, I, I don't know a lot about drones, in fact. So um, I sent them the logs, and uh, they, they looked at the logs to, to understand. And uh, they found the solution, in fact. The motors were, wasn't, weren't in the right order. So the wiki from the guys from Paparazzi and the internal documentation from Parap was wrong. That was fun, but... Uh, so, oh yeah, you don't see it really well here, but um, uh, what you could see is that um, you have here the motors. It's the order of the motors that's expected. So it's basically one, two, three, and four. And on the first one, you can see that uh, Randy sent me this picture, and you have... It shows that uh, the user, uh, the drone wants to roll uh, right and pushes on the appropriate motors, which are two and three, but in the end, it, ro it rotates left. So he said to me, you probably inverted the left and right motors. So I just made the change, and this time it flew. <laughs> um, after that, uh, after doing that, I had to submit my contributions. So I discussed with Twitch, who is basically the maintainer, especially on the low level Linux stuff. Um, he asked me to rework a bit, which is totally normal. They, they are very, uh, let's say, easy on patches compared to anything else, I've seen, because it's modelist things, and they are quite cool with that. It's no Linux kernel, you, you don't have uh, hundreds of RFCs uh, version, uh, I don't know how. No, they are very, very easy with that. Uh, the patches got accepted in the end. It, it took me, it was very fast. In the end, it took me one month of work from the beginning of the project to the moment the patches were upstream. Uh, it was only 17 patches for the basic support of the sensors, the motors, and the, the inputs. And uh, so that was all for the first phase. It was my, my goal uh, before going on vacation. I, I had to do that. So I did that. And um, so what's coming up next? On this, it is. Uh, I have. To, I just really want people to use it. So I, I will write a wiki page where we'll to have some details, and I even ask the regular software guys from Parrot to modify their software to make it easy uh, easier to hack, because there was yeah they. It's not the same tool chain as the one APM is using, and there was it was missing. Some kernel options were missing, so I asked them to add to add the kernel option. It was the thumb support because the recent tool chains needed the thumb support and the older ones didn't. So um, uh, there are some sensors that are still missing. I started to work on the optical flow, but it's not done yet. And the sonar isn't done yet either. I have added uh, a heater since also. It's a small resistor that heats the, the IMU um, in order for it to keep a constant temperature because IMU drifts over temperature. Um, and uh, what could be fun also is, is to integrate uh, it in the regular software as uh, an, an alternative to our flight stack right now. It could be fun if users could switch it uh, via user commands. But if they can't, I, I will still write a wiki to explain to them how to remove Parrot software and put another one in it. Still, there is no support for filming yet, which makes it kind of useless for some people, but it's still fun to pilot. And I will add also the, the, the videos and stuff. We're working on it. It's fun. Um, 
We still, for the for Parrot, it already had benefits. I was able to compare some performances, and uh, sometimes it flies better. Not all the time, but there are things in which it, it stands very well against the, the Parrot software. For instance, uh, when the drone is going uh, backwards very fast, we had a, an issue, and it, 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 it kind of vibrates. And uh, with the Audiopilot software, I was kind of able to notice that it, did, it didn't. So they started to study, and they, they fixed some bugs with that. Um, we have access to the drone code ecosystem, and it's very, very fun, because there are lots of tools. You can do lots of, of stuff. You can, uh, you can have flight plans. You can have lots of stuff that are not even supported in the official firmware yet uh, of the Bebop. Uh, you also have piloting modes, which is fun, too, because you can pilot in manual mode. Bebop is, is used to make movies, so you pilot it and it's very slow and it's, it films and it's very easy. But if you use APM, you can pilot it in powerful mode. You can crush it very easily, but it's fun. You can make it flip, uh, go left, uh, go very fast. Uh, or even you can uh, control the, directly the, the motors and you can make it stop 100 meters high, make it fall. And then you just push the motors when you're this at this height, and it's, it still works. So it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so that's approximately all on that. Uh, the, some useful links here. You can see the GitHub, my GitHub for some stuff, but especially DIY drones, which is the, the GitHub of APM and a lot of other projects. Pixhawk website too, which is the other flight stack. It's open source also, and it's... Uh, it's, it's useful to take a look at it, too. Um, I would say also that we are recruiting in Paris. I don't know how many people here are in Paris, but uh, okay. Well, I have finished. And um, we're recruiting anyone. And so if you have questions. <laughs> Does anyone have questions? Yes. Ah, <laughs> um, this is something I've been asking a lot, and uh, I really would like to do such a thing. Uh, fact is, Parrot don't want to, to let's say, uh, have engineers working ex exclusively on that, and especially something is that we don't sell the SOCs. So it's difficult to argue with the people and say we have to upstream them. I know the benefits of them, but still, since we don't, have, we don't sell the SOCs directly, it's one argument less. Because if we were selling SOCs, it would be easy, at least easier to convince people that we should upstream the, the mainstream the changes. Hey, no. We have to add it, but it will be done in, in, uh, very quickly, I think. I will have to do that, especially with this project. I will uh, p just put it on our GitHub. It will, it will be all right and very easy to do. But still, the sources are available on, the, on our website. Yeah, it's an obligation, so they are. But no, we don't have the Git tree uh, available yet. I think it's going to be available. Any other question? Yes? Uh, so, Audio Pilot is that. I'm sorry if, I, if it wasn't clear. Huh? Or what? Um, Audio Pilot was based on Arduino, and it's the one that has been ported on Linux. Sorry if it wasn't clear in my presentation. It's, uh, yeah, it's Audio Pilot was designed to run on Arduino, and then it's the one that uh, Trid and other guys ported to Linux. Uh, but I, yeah, uh, it's still, I haven't tried the hardware called Ar the Audio Pilot. Oh, you mean the Autopilot, the board? Okay. Uh, so there are boards that are called autopilots too, and they are basically like the main board of the Bebop, and you can purchase them. Usually they're open hardware, we are not. And the um, Arduino-based APM also refers to this type of boards. So no, I haven't tried. I have been sent, Trich sent me a Pixhawk, which is a bit more advanced. It's on STM32, and I have to try it. <laughs> I haven't yet. I have to build a, a real drone with it, so yes. This one? No, the ah, the controller. Uh, it's, uh, it's called Parrot Sky Controller. i I show you one. Uh, uh, I, have, I was kind of prepared to that question. Uh -uh. Nope. No, it doesn't want to. 
Uh, yeah, I cannot show it, but uh, it's uh, it's called Parrot Sky Controller. Oh yeah, it's here. This is the yeah. It's a bit expensive yet. It has to become less expensive. So it's uh, a big remote running, in fact, Android. But I'm able to remove Android and uh, Flash Linux just based on Easy Box instead because Android is a pain in the neck to me. Uh, and uh, you can connect the tablet to it also. It, it it has two purposes. The uh, most important one is it's a long range Wi Fi. So it, it's an access point. You connect to the drone and you can connect your tablet to it via Wi Fi and it, it uses it's like a bridge to have long range Wi Fi. It holds, it's al also has a video output and stuff, but uh, yeah, the main use is that. And so you have the joysticks, and in the end, it's uh, an admin chip that is uh, sending, it's connected to the to parrot in the USB like a regular Linux joystick. So it works the same way as the, any pad uh, plugged in USB to your PC. Okay, thank you.